Hello, I'm Bert Green, and this is the Bert Locker. Uh, it's the first one of the year. I've decided to do a um, casuals guide for UFC Vegas 84, headlined by uh, Magomed Ankalaev, Johnny Walker 2. Uh, the reason I've been... I, I haven't been as active with my videos. I'll be totally honest, I am so ill. I've been so ill this week that I've been tapping out. I've been tapping out most things, honestly. But I'm, the, the paracetamol has given me a brief reprieve that I thought, you know what, I can maybe use that to get my casuals guide picks in. Sitting a little further forward than I normally would, because full disclosure, there's a, there's a cat behind me. I, uh, I, I, I asked him if he, if he wanted to move, he said I'm not keen. So, I, I said, oh, okay, fair enough. He, he's, you know, he's, he's been a great comfort to me when I've been lying on my, on my man flu deathbed for the past week or so. But yeah, I don't think I've got long before these paracetamol will completely wear off. So I'm going to get cracking. This is the casuals guide to UFC Vegas 84. <laughs> going to start off in the bantamweight division. We've got Joshua Van, uh, nine and one, fighting out Burma against Felipe Bunes, uh, thirteen and six out of Brazil. Five foot five plays five foot six. Uh, Van usually prefers to stand. He's a decent knockout artist. He's got good knockouts on the regionals. He's had he's on a two fight win streak in the UFC. Both of those decisions are often against the better opponents. You see that knockout uh, ratio start to dwindle ever so slightly. Uh, Bunez is an excellent grappler, new to the UFC, 8 out of 13 by way of submission. Uh, Van, he's got the UFC experience and he has the power. Um, I think he gets his first knockout in the UFC in this one. Then you've got Nicholas Motta, 13 and 5, taking on uh, Tom Nolan, 6 and 0 out of Australia. Um, uh, Motta out of Brazil, uh, 170 pound welterweight division. So you've got um, 5 foot 9 playing 6 foot 3, uh, a 2 and a half inch reach for Nolan. Now Motta, he's a decent striker. Uh, he has been up and down. He got flattened by Jim Miller, honestly, but he got he did knock out Van Camp. He got a good knock out of Van Camp last time. He's got good hands, but his chin is 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 debatable. Um, Nolan, I've seen this guy. He, 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 he's the first round knockout he got on the Dana Watts Contender Series I do actually remember it. I know I'd seen him before somewhere um, he seems like he's a very solid kickboxer he's one of these like kickboxer characters out of um, out of Australia I don't think he's at City Kickboxing though not from what I can see uh, early in his career obviously uh, he's Huge for 170 pounds, six foot three. My God, um, I'll take the undefeated Australian here. Uh, Motta, he's not come off great when his tins, when his chin's been tested, and I think that Nolan most likely will test that chin. Uh, Weston Wilson, uh, 16 and eight out of the USA, takes on Gene Silva, 11 and two out of Brazil, 145 pound division. Six foot one plays five foot seven with a four inch reach for Wilson. Now Wilson, he had a rough uh, UFC debut. Uh, he got knocked out in round one. He didn't really get a chance to implement his skill set. Uh, grappling is where his bread and butter is. 11 submissions on 16 wins. It's no secret what his game plan is. I mean, I wonder what he could be going for, right? You know, it's like that. That's there's no surprises there. Uh, Silva, he's very good striker so this could be a problem for Wilson honestly uh, eight knockouts on 11 wins he does have some submissions but simply put the ground advantage is going to go to Wilson and the advantage on the feet is going to go to Silver so we're going to have to see what happens here my bet's going to be on a Silver knockout honestly but just because we've seen it before so recently um, on the on the losing end for Wilson uh, Farid Basharat 11 and 0 out of Afghanistan then takes on Taylor Lapilus Lapilus, uh, 19 and 3 out of France, 135 pound bantamweight division. Uh, 5 for 8 plays, 5 for 6 with a 2 inch reach for Lapilus. Now, Bash Harat is very impressive. He's got good striking. He's well rounded. He's aggressive. He looks for the finish. He got a brilliant triangle back in September. He's dangerous, honestly, wherever the fight goes. Uh, Lapilus, he's a very good kickboxer. He does have submissions, but um, he uh, beat that muscle shark Irish kid, Laughlin. Bre Bre Laughlin. I can't remember the first name. Brendan Laughlin? I don't know. Not Brendan Laughlin. Uh, Kieran Laughlin, I think. Um, the guy who came out of Cage Warriors, who looks a lot like the... He's built like Sean Shirk used to be when he was on all all the juice. <laughs> so I call him the, the Irish muscle shark. But either way, yeah, he got, um, he got he managed to beat him. 
I do think that Bash Harat is more aggressive and probably slightly better in every area. Not by much. This is good matchmaking. I quite like this one. Uh, but I will take Bash Harat if, uh, with a gun to my head. You know, um, Marcus McGee, 8-1, uh, and one, taking on uh, Gaston Balaos out of Peru. 7-3. Seven, seven uh, another bantamweight fight, £135. Uh, 5 for 8 plays, 5 for 7. Now, McGee, he's one of those guys, he looks like he's about 50 and he's got a crack problem. Uh, he's not. He's like in his 30s. The dude can bang, though, right? He's coming off two finishes in the UFC. One super mission one knockout he's actually really really good I, 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 the first first time i saw this guy i made fun of him for looking like he had a, a really bad meth problem but you know what he's really skillful he's very good he's, and he's fun to watch he gets a lot of finishes uh balanos uh, is a muay thai guy uh, 26 and 3 is a muay thai kickboxer uh, seven wins six knockouts in mixed martial arts uh, he's been caught in a couple of submissions before though which is where that that's what i'm circling for this one for mcgee uh, the easiest path is a takedown and to get the submission and i and that's my pick i think that i'm, I'm gonna go mcgee uh, submission on that one Matthew Semmelsberger versus Preston uh, Parsons, uh, 170 pound division. Six foot one plays 5'11, four inch reach for Semmelsberger. Now, Semmelsberger didn't have a good 2023. He lost twice. He's looking to bounce back, right? He's got good kickboxing. He's a Muay Thai guy predominantly. Uh, Parsons is very good if, when he can implement his game plan. 10 wins, nine submissions. So I wonder what the game plan could be. Again, it's a real mystery, all right? Semmelsberger has more to lose here. He has the reach and he has the kickboxing advantage. I think that if he can keep Parsons off him he will get the decision um, it's a big if though uh, Andrei Olofsky, uh, 34 22 0 and 2 uh, taking on Waldo Cortez Acosta 10 and 1 from the Dominican Republic 265 pound the heavyweight 6 foot 3 plays 6 foot 4 7 inch reach for Olofsky in this one now Olofsky is a UFC legend he was a champ back in the day he's still going at 44 he went on a 4 fight win streak to a 2 fight skid he's, he's completely up and down he's all over the place uh, he's looking to get a, get a win back so look, he's very very experienced and he's very good at controlling the fight which often leads to him getting decisions um, but he's very up and down, especially at this point in his career. Cortez Acosta is very good. He's well-rounded. Uh, but it takes more than that to beat Orlovsky, honestly. I do like Orlovsky by decision in this one. I think he's he's a really good litmus test for these heavyweights. And not everyone passes. In fact, you know, you have to be pretty good to beat Orlovsky still, even at this stage in his career. So that's the uh, prelims. We'll now look at the main card. Uh, if you enjoy this content, hit subscribe. Hit the bell notifications. I drop a lot of content on various sports, NFL, fancy NFL, NASCAR. Uh, I do stand-up comedy in my spare time, so I'll drop comedy content as well. So look, just hit the, hit the bell notifications. Let's you know when they're dropping. And yeah, thank you. Uh, Phil Hawes... Um, 12 and 5 takes on Bruno Ferreira, 10 and 1 out of Brazil, 185 pound division. So 6 foot plays 5 foot 10 with a 5 and a half inch reach for Hawes. Now, Hawes is an NCAA wrestler, all right? He's got a, he's an NCAA wrestler with a glass jaw, honestly. If he gets a hold of you, it's a bad night. If you land a good one on him, you're probably going to be okay. Ferreira is a great striker, got knockout power. He knocked out Gregory Rodriguez, Robocop. Now, that is impressive because he's an hard bastard. Uh, really scary power, honestly. So for me, history has shown you that all you need to do is land one on whores and he, he's he's pretty pretty uh what's the word I'm, I'm losing my words god i'm so ill it's pretty pretty um i don't know what the word is he's, i'm sorry yeah no it, he gets caught by yeah he gets caught caught by those <laughs> i'm losing my words Ferreira is probably the guy who can knock out um, Hawes in that one. That, that's that, that's my pick. He's um, vulnerable, vulnerable to strikes. That's the word I was looking for. My God. Oh, I need to go back to bed. This was a terrible idea. This was a terrible, terrible idea. Ricky Simone, uh, 20 and 4, take on Mara Batista, 12 and 2, 135 pound band to weight division. 5 foot 6 plays 5 foot 9, 3 inch reach for Batista. Now, uh, Simone, he's so strong for 135 pounds. You really look at the state of him, he's so big, he's just very strong. He throws hard, on, but on the ground is where he's just so strong. He got lit up by Song Yudong, but that was on a, he was on a five fight run previous to that. He's very, very dangerous. Batista's very dangerous. Brown belt Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, three submissions in a row in the UFC. That's hard to do, but he did it. Um, for me, the best game plan for Batista is to implement the grappling. My only concern there is that Simone is so physically strong, he's difficult to dominate in the grappling, and he has very good grappling himself. I quite like uh, Ricky Simone by, by decision in that one. Jim Miller, 36-17, 0-1. 
taking on Gabriel Benitez, 23 and 11, out of Mexico. 155 pound lightweight division. Five for eight, plays five for eight. Both of them have a 71 inch reach. Now, Miller is a savage. He's a legend of sport, Hall of Famer. He's, he must be. He needs to fight at UFC 300, no matter what happens in this fight. He's pretty good on the feet. He's got very good low leg kicks in. He, you know, he, he tends to get involved in dog fights when he's exchanging punches, but where he's really good is in the grappling. He's got such strong grappling. If he gets on top of you, then it's, it, you know, he's very, very good. Uh, Benitez is a bit of a weird one. He's, I'm not hugely familiar with him, but he's actually been in the UFC since 2014, which is crazy. He's got 10 submissions on his record, uh, but not none since 2016, honestly. He seems to gravit gravitate more towards the striking these days, uh, but he's only won two in his last six. So Miller is the favourite here, rightly so. He's probably slightly better overall, especially on the ground. I think the path of least resistance for Miller is to get this one grounded and find the submission. Mateus Nicolau, 19-4-1 and one out of Brazil. Uh, Manel Cap, 19-5 out of Angola for the uh, featherweight division, 145 pounds. Five foot six plays five foot five with a two inch reach for Cap. Now Nicolau is a BJJ black belt with a higher takedown average than usual. He's got about 1.48 per 15 minutes. He has a Japanese necktie on his record, which is very impressive. That's hard to do. It's one way you kind of go over the top and just Google, just Google Japanese necktie for God's sake, rather than me trying to mime out that nonsense. I'm trying to mime a Japanese necktie. Why? Just, just Google it. We can do that now. Anyway, um, he's he, look, he's pretty good on the feet, but he, I don't think he wants to play that game with Manel Cap. He didn't last time anyway. Uh, Manel Cap, he's entertaining as all hell these days. He started on Izzy at a press conference, which is hilarious. Uh, he's been very funny lately. I'll be watching the, the, the press conference. He's got a very good knockout rate, especially for 145 pounds. Um, but he did lose to, Nicholas, to, to Matthias Nicolau uh, previously. So uh, as I say, this is a rematch. And uh, Cap lost the first one, but he is younger, very slightly, than Nicolau. So Chael's prophecy doesn't quite hold up here. His, the, the Chael prophecy, obviously, two guys rematch. The younger one wins the rematch, except faster. And whilst the Chael rule doesn't apply, I do think, actually, um, Nicolau has a style that Cap isn't brilliant with because he's just he's very good at the grappling. Uh, I do kind of like Nicolau by submission in this one. I don't think it, both of them have basically come, they, they both advanced about the same amount since their rematch, since their first matchup and Nicolau won the first one. Uh, I could see, I could see a finish in this one though, submission, because, um, you know, Manel Cap's been submitted before, that's all I'll say. And then you've got the main event, Magomed Ankalaev, 18-1-1 and one out of Russia. Uh, Johnny Walker, 21-7 and seven out of Brazil. 205-pound division. 6'3", play 6'6", six six with a 7-inch reach for Walker. Now, this is a rematch, don't forget. Uh, Anka, the first one ended by way of DQ, just, just for background. Anyway, Ankalaev is very good. He's dull as dishwasher. <laughs> Dishwash? <sighs> Let's start that again. Ankalaev is very good. He's... Dull as dishwater, but he is very, very good. I'm not going to lie. Look, he's got he's got very good grappling. The transit, the MMA grappling, he does very well. He transitions really well. His kickboxing's very tight, very tight if unspectacular. Like he'll only land the big shots when there's an opening, and but he's very good at, at preventing openings on himself. Like by he's always got a very tight guard, and he's very good with mixing the kicks in. Very, very slick. Whereas Johnny Walker. He's like, he's just, he's very tall for the division. Six foot six is ridiculous. Seven inch reach as well. But he's like a spectacular striker. He throws the flying knees, the spinning back kicks. He throws all these massive unorthodox punches. And he used to be much worse for it. But he's down at SBG Island now with coach uh, John Kavanagh, McGregor's coach. Um, it seems to have reined him in, like controlled the chaos. Not got rid of the chaos because the chaos is what got him to the dance. But they're controlling his chaos a little bit better. So he's a little bit more measured. He sets things up a little bit better. We saw that in the first fight. Because let's have a look at the first fight. The first fight, I thought Johnny Walker did very well. He was chewing up the inside leg of Ankalaev because we saw that was a big weakness when uh, Ankalaev fought Jan uh, Blakovic. Jan Blakovic chewed up his legs. And that, that's clearly a weakness there because he, he wasn't good once his wheels got taken out from under him. The inside leg kick is there all day for Walker because Ankalaev stands in quite a wide boxing stance because he does his best work with his hands. So he, he's often standing in the wider boxing stance, which leaves him open for the inside leg kick, which Walker was taking advantage of you know quite a lot in the first fight for as long as it lasted. But then um, 
No, Walker does all these tricky things. Like, it, like it, it, Anchor Live landed a body shot and Walker kind of faked being hurt and then went and tried to land a flying knee. But then that ended with them against the fence and then Anchor Live got the takedown and then Anchor Live landed an illegal knee right in the head. And it was an illegal knee and uh, it wasn't Walker that didn't want to continue. It was the language barrier that kind of that ruined that one because the doctor said, where are you? He's like, I'm in the desert. It was in Abu Dhabi as well, by the way. Also... You know, there's a big advantage to those um, to those Russian wrestling cats in Abu Dhabi. Uh, there, there is an advantage there. I don't know. Read into that what you will, but there are uh, for some reason those guys do very very well. Like th- those go- those cards, almost all the um, the Russian wrestlers will win on Abu Dhabi fight cards. So just 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 to bear in mind, the rematch is not taking place in Abu Dhabi. It is in Las Vegas. I don't know how that's going to affect the fight, if at all. But I, for me, if Johnny Walker stays composed and doesn't do anything reckless and silly, he'll chew up the inside leg and he will catch Ankalaev with something because he's very difficult to take down. In open, in open play, he's very difficult to take down because he's just so big. However, against the fence, he can be taken down. That's where Ankalaev is going to be looking to take this. He's going to be looking to rush him, put him against the fence, use his grappling to drag him down, and that's how he's going to get him to the floor. So, you know, as long as as long as Walker doesn't do anything silly, then he can win this one. Unfortunately, like a five-round fight, Walk, the chances of Walker not doing anything silly in that time is slim because it's, it's just not in his wheelhouse, it's not in his nature. But that's what makes him so fun to watch. So you know what? I am going to roll the dice. I'm going to roll the dice on an anchor li- on, on a Johnny Walker knockout. I think I'm rolling the dice on the power of Walker on him doing something silly, but something silly that works. If that's not a smart bet, I'll be doing that in my terrible bet videos later on. But I don't think it's a smart bet. It's not a good bet. Ankalaya by decision is probably your safest bet. But I, I don't know. I, I, my pick is going to be Johnny Walker by. By knockout, is that because I want it to happen more than I think it actually will happen? Probably, yeah, if I'm being honest. But you know what? A pick is a pick, and that is my pick. My pick is Johnny Walker. My pick is the knockout. I hope it happens. I'm quite looking forward to this rematch. I think it's a good matchup. It's it's a fun matchup. Good one to start the year off. And uh, yeah, so I'll be doing some terrible bet uh, videos if I'm feeling up to it. (laughs) Oh, God, I feel feel awful. Oh, God, man. Anyway, yeah, so I'll be doing that over the weekend and I'll be doing a proper video looking at, uh, obviously, there's been some big news, Joshua versus Ngannou, all kinds of fights been announced for UFC 300, but I can't bother to think about that right now because I, I'm, I'm going back to bed. And until next time, keep those odds long and those bets terrible.